It's the first major cabinet shuffle in two years, and it's a big one. Premier Ford has booted a few key members of his cabinet, introduced a few new faces, and brought back a former heavy hitter. This is Ford's election cabinet, slightly more diverse and more GTA voices at the cabinet table. Former finance minister Rod Phillips is back. Forced to resign his post after he broke COVID-19 protocols by traveling to the Caribbean over the holidays, he's now taking over the long-term care portfolio. It's a comeback that's bringing tough criticism. For the Ford government to appoint a minister that was missing in action um, during the second wave and frankly on vacation in the tropics while seniors died in long-term care is concerning and does not provide hope that there will be justice in our long-term care system. Marilee Fullerton, who came under repeated fire for her handling of long-term care during the pandemic and who faced lots of criticism in her previous post with universities, colleges and training, is staying in cabinet. She'll be taking over children, community and social services. Stephen Lecce retains his post in education, as does Deputy Premier Christine Elliott in health. Peter Bethenfalvy in finance and Sylvia Jones as Solicitor General. We saw uh, within each of those portfolios um, just a complete mishandling of the pandemic, mixed communication, um, inconsistent messaging. Um, and, you know, I think it's concerning that those folks um, are, are still in those positions. So who's out and who's in? Well, former Minister of Energy Jeff Urich is out and so is Minister of Infrastructure Lori Scott. Bill Walker and Ernie Hardiman, also veteran MPP John Yakabuski, the former Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. So who are the new faces? Brampton's Prab meet Sarkaria gets a boost from Associate Minister of Small Business to the President of the Treasury Board. Etobicoke's Kinga Surma, a longtime Ford ally, gets promoted from Associate Minister of Transportation to Minister of Infrastructure. Willowdale's Stan Cho takes over Surma's post and Northumberland MPP David Piccini takes on the environment. Now, swearing in happened earlier today and virtually, but sources tell City News that some of the ministers who lost their positions at the table found out about their demotions through the media. We've also been told that some of those demotions were not a reflection on performance, but rather an effort to increase the profiles and visibility of MPPs in more contentious ridings like those in the GTA. Now, Richard Southern joins us now. He's the Queen's Park Bureau Chief for 680 News. And Richard, speaking about those contentious ridings, we see that Khalid Rashid and Nina Tangri, both from Mississauga, both in contentious ridings, both being promoted to associate ministers, what does this mean for Ford heading into the election? Back ventures, names we haven't heard a lot over the past three years, Christina. Look, fresh faces are, I think, what the government's looking for right now. Uh, this is a government that has fallen in the polls during the third wave. Uh, it's a, a government that's looking for a restart. I think that has a lot to do with it. I, I think, too, the premier might be looking for some new voices to listen to. Perhaps he may have not been happy with some of the advice he was getting. We know there's some people in the, it, that were in the cabinet that were pushing back against lockdowns. Perhaps it's the case, Christina, that the premier blames them for what happened in the third wave. So he's looking for a bit of a restart here. He's looking for a restart, but he's bringing back some of the old timers, right? So Phillips is back in with a very difficult portfolio, long-term care, big portfolio, especially in the pandemic, and not an easy one. The headlines at first might look a little surprising. It's the guy who was on the beach uh, that's the <laughs> yeah, long-term that, care minister. Yeah. But when you think more about it, I mean, here's a shrewd political operative that they're bringing into this critical portfolio. To me, it kind of signals that maybe the government's going to make long-term care the centerpiece of their election campaign, which has kind of already gotten underway. Uh, I could see Christina Phillips, who's, you know, a money man, making a lot of big money announcements about long-term care over the next 12 months leading up to the election. I think this is a signal that they're really going to focus on long-term care. Well, and that's a good thing because I know that for decades it's been a problem for many different governments, going back to at least Harris and certainly through McGinty and Wynn as well. So maybe this is the start of something a lot new. Of names remaining, though, that's an interesting part too, right? The education minister, the health minister, they're keeping their portfolios at the same time, Christina. Yeah, in fact, most of the pandemic team, Sylvia Jones, uh, Christine Elliott, so much of the same with a few big changes. We'll though. see what voters think about it. Yeah, thank you so much for your nice time, to Richard. See you, Christina.